Good morning. Is uh, Suzanne, please? No, she isn't. Uh, Can I take a message? Oh, now, who am I talking to? Uh, this is her mother, Jamie. Um, yes, um, I'm Officer uh, Kumstein calling from the uh, County Sheriff's Department. And I'm calling in regards to Ernesto. Okay. Um, do, do you know? Do you know this man? Yes, he's my daughter's fiance. They're getting married tomorrow. Is there something I can help you with? Well, there sure is. We have Ernesto in custody down here at the uh, the sheriff's department, and we were told to call Suzanne this morning. Ernesto told us to call. You have Ernesto in custody. Yes, we um, do. Well, what happened? Ernesto and a couple of his buddies tried knocking off a uh, liquor store in San Mateo. What? What? Ernesto tried to knock off a liquor store? Yes, and uh, we have him on film. We have uh, we have the uh, evidence. And it looks like he's going to be locked away for quite some time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, I warned her. I warned her not to get mixed up with that kind of person. That That kind of person? You know, I warned her not to get involved with a Mexican. I can't believe this. You did, did you? I did, yes. Yes, several times. But I, well, I didn't really suspect him, but you know you know how those people are. No, no, I don't, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, this is Lamont and Tonelli calling from 92.3 KSJO. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're kidding. Your daughter set you up for this. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say to your son-in-law to be? Oh, I'm so sorry. Wow. Can you believe her? Oh, man. What a bigot. <laughs> she didn't sound too... Sorry. How does she face the? How does she face not only the groom, but the groom's family oh, every tomorrow? Oh, I, I would pay to go to that wedding. Good morning. Is this uh, Anne? Uh, yeah. Hi, Anne. Uh, this Hi. Is, uh, this is Dr. Wolf. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And maybe this will cheer you up a bit, okay? Mm. Turn on your radio. This is Lamont and Tonelli calling from 92.3 KSJO. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Oh, you guys are a pain in the butt. Good oh, morning. <laughs> hey, we've been oh, told yeah. the worst. And, uh, <laughs> and everyone at work sets you up for this. Chris, Cheryl, Dan, there must be like 10, 15 oh, names here. I am so tired, you guys. They just wanted to let you know that they're thinking about you while you're taking this time off. Oh, that was nice of them. <laughs> yeah, do you have a message for them? Uh, kill them all when I get back. <laughs> all right. I hope I speedy recovery to you. Yeah, take, take, take care of that back end. I will. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> back a little. I just took a bike. And did she sound out of it? No wonder. But at least she had a sense of humor about it at the end. Yeah. Kind of got a chuckle out of it. Thanks Sensor to everybody. was a little worried, though. Thanks to everybody at Ann's work for that fax. And if you'd like to fax in a Dirty Friday request, 453-KSJO. I think we've done a new one this morning. We're calling that? drugged out people this morning. <laughs> no, I don't think that's anything no. new. You're right. James's name? Good. Mm -hmm. Hello? Good morning. Is, uh, is James... Uh, Please. Yeah, that's me. Hi, James. Uh, this is Officer Zinia from uh, the uh, San Jose Police Department. Uh huh. And I'm calling in regards to uh, well, we have your son in custody. Your son, Trevor. Trevor. Yes, we have him. Uh, we have him in custody with uh, three of his friends. Really? Where? Well, we have him down here at the uh, at the jailhouse. What happened? Well, this morning it seems that he uh, he and his friends decided to uh, play a little prank on some of the motorists going down 280. And they were throwing they were throwing things on the cars as they were passing by. This is Trevor. Yes, this is your son Trevor. Oh my God! Who? Uh, what, what friends? Well, his friends uh, John and uh, Carrie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently, according to his friends, Trevor was kind of the ringleader in this. Oh, really? And when the police department rolled up. Trevor was the one that was actually throwing the things on the cars. Oh, God. Now, I don't, mind, I don't mind telling you that your son's in a lot of trouble here, and he's also, you're liable for all the damage that he's done to the cars that were driving by. We've had at least 12 claims from uh, different motorists, and I'd imagine we'll, uh, we'll get a few more throughout the day. Oh, my so, God. So far, I'd say you're looking at, at a total of maybe $35,000 damage that you're liable for. God. How long were they up there? Well, they were up there for at least 20, 25 minutes before we arrived. It takes, takes you guys that long to... Well, it's a morning rush hour traffic by the time we got the call. God. 35000 $35,000, you're liable for the bill. Did he hit a couple Rolls Royces? <laughs> no, he didn't hit Rolls Royces, but needless to say... Uh... Rush hour traffic, he dented a few hoods, a few Mercedes, a few Lexus. Does anybody get hurt? No, no one's hurt, thank God. Somebody might get hurt. Some might get hurt? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we have your son in custody down here, um, James. So is... And we'd like you to come down and pick him up. Is there, uh, is there a bail involved here, too? Well, yes, there is bail. You have to... Uh, you have to turn your radio to 92.3 KSGO because you're on the air. No. It's Dirty Friday. Your, no. wife, your, your wife set you up. Good uh, morning. Uh, uh, your wife, Sheila, faxed us and said, sting James and tell him we're having a problem with Trevor. I think I'll throw her off the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> have a good day, all right? Well, Hold on the line. We might have some bricks for you or something. How about a Neil Diamond CD? <laughs> Neil Diamond? I told, I told you he listens to the old parts <laughs> Neil Diamond? <laughs> Hang on the line, Someone's, James. We'll set you up with something. Someone still listen to Neil Diamond? <laughs> Cracklin' Rose. <laughs> it's 831. What's happening in traffic? Neil Diamond? <laughs> About to get a career break here. Yeah. Good morning, is uh, Courtney... This is. Hi, Courtney. This is uh, Mr. Uh, Benson from uh, DEF um, Casting. Oh, really? Yes. Do you mind if we get you on the speakerphone here? Um, I'm, I'm sitting here with uh, Mr. Scalfa. 
Oh, sure, sure. Go ahead. All right. Mr. Uh, Scalfa is... Uh, is in charge of a um, uh, special project that we've been doing. Are you all right? I'm fine, I'm fine. All Just right, a little great. pickle today. All right. Mr. Scalfa is in charge of a brand new um, uh, movie that we've, we, we've got your resume and your picture in front of us, and we've seen some of your work. We've, uh, we've been to a few of the little plays that you've been to. Uh-huh. And we think we've got a part that would be absolutely perfect for you if you're interested. Oh, I'd love it. You know, it's, it's been a, a few months of... of Poverty lately uh -huh. for well, me. Well, so. well, Courtney, we think we have something for you. We, we, we also viewed your, your videotape. Oh, good. And we think, based on your resume and some of the work you've done, that you'd be perfect for, um, well, to play the part of, uh, of a love interest of uh, Michael Douglas in his next movie. Oh, are you serious? Yes, we're very serious. Oh my goodness! What, now, how long would it be a, a major role or? A well, you know, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the lead role, but it's a significant role as. Uh, as um, as you can well imagine, Michael Douglas, uh, his movies are a little steamy. Well, and as you said, it'd be a love interest. What what would that entail? Well, Mr. Douglas likes to be very realistic with his love scenes. Well, how realistic would it have to be? I mean... <laughs> very, wow. very realistic. As a matter of fact, that's, um, that's one of the uh, caveats if you take this part. Um... <laughs> that you have to participate fully with Mr. Douglas. Yes. Um, like. Well, like, like. Well, like we would. You, you have to kiss certain parts of Michael's body. Um. See. It, like, do you uh, do you mean like I'd have to go down on him? Well, if you want to refer to it that way, but. Uh, you know. Um, would you have any qualms doing something like that? Well, you know, I've done it before, but. Mm -hmm. You know, not on film, and I, I don't know. I, I guess I could try. Well, now we're talking about being realistic here. Well, yeah. And Mr. Douglas, the reason he likes that is that, well, it arouses him and makes him participate more fully in the scene. Uh-huh. Okay. And, well, and, and makes the acting much better. Now, you see, one of the major scenes in the movie has to deal with your part because Michael has an obsession. Okay. And you would not actually be doing that in the movie. Well, I guess you will, but what we it's very key that you kiss the other side. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you mean like... <laughs> you mean like you want me to lick his ass? <laughs> oh, oh, not in those terms. She's a little shocked. Oh. Oh. She is. <laughs> I am too. The sensor is. <laughs> I didn't even want her to do that. <laughs> we just said oh. kissed. Yeah. We just said kiss. Oh. I don't. I don't remember anything. Anybody oh. mentioning anything about oh. licking in that entire oh. phone call. Oh. Well, oh, now that boy. the sensor disconnected her, we have to call her back. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think the sensor might have disconnected her permanently. <laughs> um, as you're well aware, you were up at Tahoe um, last week. And, oh, actually, that's incorrect. Well, sir, we have your, your wife signing in last week. Well, using your. Then my wife was there, sir. Yes, but it is, it's a, your, your timeshare. Well, whoever used it. You've uh, you used up um, a week's worth of your timeshare, and the reason I'm calling you, sir, when you were up there, or your wife was up there, um, there was some damage to the suite. What kind of damage? Well, I'd say $3,200 worth of damage, sir. What? $3,200 worth of damage. It was a couple of burns in the carpet and the toilet overflow. Oh, my God. That, that bitch. Excuse me? Well, what are you calling me for? I, obviously, well, I wasn't there. Why don't you call her? Well, sir, you're responsible. Uh, now, what should we do about it? Should we just send you the bill? Send her the bill. i got nothing to do with it. I'm trying to sell the thing. I'm getting divorced from her. I should have no recourse on what damage she does to the well, timeshare. You know, well, you, who so, signed in that day? It was her that signed in. Well, I have yeah, nothing yes. to do with that bitch. I, I'm trying to dump her as it is. Well, I'm not going to be responsible sir, for this. It's all there is to it. Sir, you you are responsible. You're legally responsible. Maybe, no, I maybe think you can, you're wrong. Maybe you can work this out with her. No, I think that's where you're wrong. 
I said, the person responsible should be that bitch who signed in. I had nothing to do with that. You should call her right now. Make her, her and her new boyfriend, make him pay for the money. I didn't do anything. I'm not paying for that bitch. Well, Damn it, I'm not. Sir, sir <laughs> maybe, maybe you can work that out with her then, all right? No. no that's something you guys got to work out. I'm not doing it. Well, yeah, but sir, it's in your name. We'll just send you the bill. I'll tell you what. We'll send you a bill, and you can send us the money, all right? 92.3 KSJL Lamont and Tonelli, you're on the air. It's a dirty Friday. Good morning. What? Barry, your brother Ed sets you up for this dirty Friday call. You're oh, on. Ed, I am going to kill him. You're on the air. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. So, Barry, are, are, things, kill him. are things proceeding smothly? I'm kill her, uh, too. <laughs> Are things proceeding smoothly with your separation from your wife? Oh, I'd say, uh, well, let's put it this way. I would have believed you guys. <laughs> I would have believed you guys. You had me going there. Uh, all right, hold on the line, all right, buddy. Maybe we'll, uh, well, we haven't got any <laughs> vacations to give him, even though she used up all your timeshare. He's a bitch, Andy. All right, we all understand right, yes, we that. Got yeah, idea, you got Barry. that point across. Is he a butcher? He's, I guess he works in the meat department somewhere. Get his last name. Morning, Peggy. May I help you? Hi, is uh, John in the meat department there, please? Hold on, please. Seven fifty-two. He minutes before eight. Meteorologist Mike says hi. Meat department. Good morning. Is this John? Yeah. Hi, John. Uh, this is Mr. Welch calling from the uh, Santa Teresa. Uh-huh. And I'm calling in regards to uh, your son. Yes. Uh, it seems we've got a little bit of a problem here, uh, John. What's that? Uh, we caught your son, um, well, there's no real nice way of saying this. We caught your son uh, smoking pot this morning in the high school bathroom. In the high school bathroom? Yeah. By himself? Well, him and a couple of his friends. Smoking pot? Yeah. And it was pot. I mean, you took it from him or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we... We took it from him and... Uh, what is it, like one cigarette or... Well, he, there, there was more than one cigarette involved. That's the scary thing. And where was it at? Well, it was in the bathroom. I mean, where was the rest of this marijuana at? In his locker. In my son's locker? Yeah. Okay. Now, needless to say, this is a very, well, I guess, dire situation for us. And Uh-huh. I, I'm just looking for your recommendation. What should we do? And you're the principal? Yeah. Well, I guess I'll have to go down there right now and talk to you. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, do you have anything you, you want us to do? Well, you caught him with marijuana, smoking marijuana. Yeah, in the you ever suspect anything like this of your kid? Never. Never? Never. Never. You are the principal? Do you ever, did, did, did you ever suspect that maybe he'd put you on the radio? This is, this is 92.3 KSJL. Your son put you up to this. He's... Oh, that son of a... Oh, there we go. It's happening again, Paul. Oh, my. Dirty Friday. <laughs> That's oh. the first flush of this Dirty Friday. The sensor is on his toes. And... We always... Uh... Oh, I'll tell you, when, when you sting uh, the one you love... Yeah, no, no. When you sting the one you love, it always gets a little ugly. Sons stinging their fathers, you hear the brothers concern stinging their other brothers. The father's voice, come my son, swing marijuana. I guess I'll have to come down and talk to you. That's all right, John. Oh. You don't need to suspect your son of that. Oh, yeah. He's just stinging you on Dirty Friday. Early in the morning, he worked all night, too. So I hope he answers the phone. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is uh, John from uh, HMS um, uh, Marketing. Oh, I'm not interested. And I'd like to I'm ask... I'm not interested. <laughs> well, let's call him back. I guess that might be a fairly common response here. <laughs> okay. You want, you want to try this one? <laughs> Maybe a different tel telephone solicitor will... We'll be able to uh, screw them up. Yeah. 
Yes, good morning, sir. My name is Mr. Lombarski from HMS Marketing. We're calling to see if uh, hey, you would listen, be interested. Listen, listen, I just got home. I've been working all night. I'm just trying to get some sleep well, here. Well, I'm sorry, please, sir, but... Please, see... just, no, no. Should we try one more time? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Morning, sir. I know you've uh, you've hung. Don't hang. Uh. Up. <laughs> he thought I was fun. He thought I was Elmer Fudd. Oh, Willie. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't notice you talking whack, Elma. He gets very, very <laughs> angry. <laughs> needs a sweep. I think we should wet the guump sweep for 10 minutes and then call him back. It's 8 11. Fax machine in the background. Yeah. Good morning, sir. This is uh, Mr. Lance calling oh, from me. Jesus. What? Just... that word again. <laughs> Bit of a temper on this guy. I guess he wants to turn the FUD off. Must be watching Elmer FUD on TV. Yeah, turn the FUD off because I'm talking on the phone. Who knows, man? <laughs> yeah. He may never answer his phone again. <laughs> yeah, what? Good morning, sir. I'm calling from HMS Marketing. Oh, Jesus. Why don't you guys just eat? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've done our chore. Okay, well, I can't tell him he's on the air. <laughs> I think we have legitimately tried to take care of our obligation here this morning. <laughs> well, maybe we'll try a little later on. Maybe the guy needs a little sleep, and then we'll tell him he was on the air. Uh, let's give him a call. Give him a call from time to time. It's been about a month, I think, since the last time we called him. 839. Hello. Good morning, Changa. That's <laughs> yeah, not too hospitable. <laughs> let's try him back. Well, at least he's not swearing now. Maybe he took a pill or something. It sounded like he had a tough time handling the phone there. Is there a fun movie special uh, on? With the last guy and this guy. <laughs> Must be that FUD film festival that's going on this weekend. Turn off the FUD. <laughs> or something like that. Now, what's this person's name? His name is Larry. Apparently, this thing barely sees the road. His pride and joy. Yeah. Probably out there waxing it just about every weekend. Of course, you wax it every night. Well, yeah, I'm very proud of the car that I have. <laughs> Nothing like a Chevy Blazer. <laughs> a five-year-old Chevy Blazer. Especially one that you love to polish. Oh, yeah. Wax and wax and wax it off all the time. Mm, polish. 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 Photographic service. Can I help you? Good morning. Is Brian there, please? Is who? Is Brian there, please? Oh, hold on just a moment. Thank you. Calling me at work. This will be good. This is Brian. Good morning, Brian. How are you this morning? Good. Good. Uh, this is uh, Officer uh, Kumstein calling from the uh, police department. And uh, I'm afraid we've had a little incident up at the home that, uh, don't worry, though, everything is all right. Uh, no one has been hurt. But we uh, caught a few uh, kids in your home uh, looting your place and vandalizing. What'd they get? 
Well, they, they got a, uh, well, they, they didn't get anything because we got them. However, they were damaging your home and we caught them in your garage. You, uh, you have a 66 Mustang? Yeah. Well, the bad news is these kids were really rough on this car. What do you mean really rough? Well, when the officers showed up on the scene, they were hitting your uh, 66 Mustang with a sledgehammer. Oh, my God. Brian? You're Brian? kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding, Brian. They absolutely, I mean, this thing looks, I don't know what kind of shape it was in before these kids got there. Oh, it was cherry. It was gorgeous. They better not have done anything. Well, there's barely Those anything. Those bastards, I'll kill them. If I ever get my hands on them. Yeah, it was almost total when we got there. Almost total? It was almost total when we got there. It was in pieces. Brian? Yeah. Brian, are you all right? No, I don't think so. So, um... We don't have insurance on that. Excuse me? We don't have insurance on that. You, you don't have insurance on a 66 Mustang? Well, we were going to insure it, and I talked to my wife last week about it, and... We only use it mainly in the summer when it's good weather. Yeah. So, so what, you we just drop had... it during the winter on insurance. You just had it parked, huh? Yeah, in the garage. Oh, man, that is that is unbelievable. Maybe something else. Uh, I've got something else to tell you, too, Brian. Are you seated? Yeah. Brian, you're on the air. This is Dirty Friday. Lamont and Tonelli, your wife, Sylvia, said to give you a call this morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Don't worry about the car, Brian. Everything's okay. You still have your Cherry 66 Mustang. Thank God for that. <laughs> Although I might get my wife after this one. <laughs> All right, Brian. <laughs> Thanks for going on the air with us, buddy. Uh, hang on the line. We, we have something for you. you got a yeah, T-shirt. We, we have a few parts from your car. <laughs> a couple of CDs, All right. nuts and bolts. Nine, 935, Dirty Friday. Lamont and Tonelli in the morning. We're stinging people at 575-KSGO. 1-800-959-VINNY. Says he has some every day. This is an actual number? 1-800-959-VINNY at Stevens Creek Toyota. Okay. Hi, this is Vinny. Oh, good morning. Are you looking for a car? Huh? Good morning. I'm looking for a car. Well, you call the right place. Now, who am I talking to? Who is this? Ah, uh, Ying Tang. Who? Ying Tang. Sound like Lamont. <laughs> Vinny, you're listening. How are well, you, what do you Vinny? think? <laughs> I, was is... born, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Vinny? Nothing. nothing. Now, now, now Vinny, are, 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 are you, um, as well as giving credit at Stevens Creek Toyota, <laughs> are you also laying odds on the Seattle uh, Phoenix game tonight? No, I don't gamble. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, Vinny, hey, listen, what kind of cars you got down there today? Can you give me a good deal? Get your deal every day. Every oh. day's a holiday, Stephen Freak Toyota. Every, <laughs> every day's, day's a holiday. Because I know, now listen, I know Brew's looking for a car. Brew, how much money you got to spend? And listen, if you can get credit for anyone, Brew's got twenty-five grand to spend. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna test we're gonna test your credit uh, ability here by getting Brew credit. Well, Brew said he pays weekly, very weekly, so he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what kind of cars you got down there? What what neighborhood you looking in, Brew? Seven thousand dollar range. What yeah, can you get for seven thousand dollars? We got a whole bunch of cars here. Well, we got all kinds. Could, could you give me like a specific? What kind of what could you set him up in? We got a nice Jetta that he drove the other day. Oh, he was already down there. Yeah, you drove a Jetta the other day. Yep. Oh, oh is this the one you're? Are you getting it through Vinny? Where else is he going to get it? <laughs> Hootie who? Vinny, way to go! You got Bruce credit. You can get anybody credit. Yeah, Bruce is cool. Bruce is cool. Yeah. All right. Listen, tell him that the hair club for men called. His appointment was canceled today. <laughs> hey, Vinny, you don't have a whole, whole lot of room to talk. <laughs> All right, Vinny, if you're looking for a car, you're looking for credit, 1-800-959-VINNY is the number. Hello? Good morning. Is Marsha there, please? Um, this is she. Hi, Marsha. Once again, I'm calling. Uh, this is Heron Balsack calling from the uh, the uh, hotels. Right. And I'm calling in regards to um, uh, the accommodations for your wedding. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Marsha, I want you to just contain yourself here because I know you were very upset the last time I talked to you. Well, obviously. And I, and I, I had no idea that you you've had one wedding and it was canceled already. Mm -hmm. You you ran into some problems. Yeah. And and I just want to say that I talked to my supervisor, mm -hmm. and the actual ballroom that you have booked we won't we won't have available because of the damage. However. In talking to my supervisor, we did come up with an alternative plan for you. That if we run it by you, if it's okay with you, we may still be able to have the wedding here tomorrow night. Yeah, what, what can you What can you do? 
Well, the facilities that we have in mind will be able to, we would be able to accommodate your large party for the wedding. So everyone that you've invited will be able to come in. We have the meeting room upstairs. Uh -huh. And the meeting rooms have like adjoining meeting rooms that we have rollout walls. So okay. we have a group in there already in one of the rooms. But they're not, they're not using their main room. So as long as you don't mind sharing a facility with the people who have that room already, if you don't object to that, they don't mind. They don't mind being part of your wedding. But I'd have to share. Well, yes, they would go about their business at the back of the room, though, and everything would be fine. They said they would just kind of observe your wedding. They wouldn't take part in the dinner or anything. They would just do what they're doing on the other side of the room. Is it like another wedding party? Who would I be sharing it with? No, no, no. It's a, it's a business convention. Uh -huh. It's the uh, it's the sex toy industry. They're they're displaying their wares. Oh my God! On a wholesale level, yes. So as long as you don't mind sharing your accommodation with another group, oh my they said God. they would not mind doing that as well. And oh. they, they've, they've, they've opened up their hearts and have made the meeting rooms available. Oh, my. This, this, this is the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Well, Marsha, this is the only thing we can do for you. I don't listen. Hello, this is my wedding. We're talking about. I'm not going to share it with anybody else, especially that kind of group you're talking about. Listen, we're thinking it may be a pretty good thing. You may be able to pick up some good deals wholesale for your honeymoon. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. This is you. You may be able to get a good deal on a dildo. Now, listen, Marsha. Listen, uh, Matt is your is your fiance. Yeah, yeah. Matt told me to give you a call this morning. It's Lamont and Tonelli on ninety two three KSJO. <laughs> oh my it, God! It's Dirty Friday. You're on the air, Marsha. <laughs> Marcia. Oh, my God. I, I knew it couldn't have happened twice. Oh, it seemed like a bad omen. I couldn't get married. This man, I could have killed him. I can't believe this. Your wedding is still on this time. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I, I love him. But I'm going to get married to him anyway, but I'm going to kill him, too. I, this, and are you sure you don't need that dildo? <laughs> hey, don't forget, Marcia. You can always get back at him on your wedding night tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that. Marsha, hold on the line, okay? We got a little wedding See, present Matt for you. Okay. Wasn't, Matt wasn't thinking that one out. <laughs> she can always get the last laugh on this one. So what if it starts a night early? <laughs> Once he's married, say goodbye uh. to sex anyway. <laughs> it's 6.56. Okay. All righty. There we go. Good morning. You've called. This is Ann speaking. How can I help you? Uh, hi, Ann. Uh, I'm calling. Uh, this is Ann. Uh... I'm sorry. Say is, that? This, is this Ann? Yes, it is. Hi, Ann. I'm calling from the uh, the Good Samaritan Hospital, and I'm calling about one of your workers that we have uh, in the emergency room right now. That I was given your number to okay. call to uh, report him being uh, not able to report to work today. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, is everything all right? Uh, yes. Uh, his name is Robert. Yeah, I was wondering. Hey, why, why, why were you wondering? Well, he's he's late. Um, he should have been in a while ago. Well, yeah. Uh, we we uh, he's been in here for probably about an hour already, oh and my. and the doctors are working on him. Don't worry though, he's all right. It, it's just a minor problem, but he won't be able to report to work uh, until later on today, or maybe later on uh, next week. Well, uh, what's the matter? When will he be? Will be? he be able to come back? Um, uh, yeah, he'll be able to... I'm very worried. What's going on? He'll be able to come back. Are you the one in charge of the medical benefits there? Yeah. Um, uh, first off, I'm going to have to get some uh, information concerning his medical card. Okay. But I guess I can share some of the information with you as long as it's confidential. Yes, of course. Most definitely. All right. Um, it, it seems Robert... Uh, this is really hard for me to tell you. Uh, That's okay. Robert... Uh, arrived earlier on this morning with a curling iron in his butt. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, Robert, Robert had a curling iron wedged in his rectum. Uh, uh, and, uh, and as a result, we, uh, mm -hmm. he won't be able to come into work this morning. Uh, uh, um, Anna, are you all right? Uh, yeah, um, okay. Um, uh, is there, uh, Oh, is there anything I can do? Um, well, well, I don't think there's anything you can do right now that's not being done at the moment. I understand. I has understand. he now? Now has he ever booked off sick for anything like this before? Because no, I'll tell you what, he's my is... recollection. Uh huh. No, no, 
<laughs> I don't remember ever hearing about a curling iron episode before uh-huh. from him. No. And and are, are you all right? Do you think this is funny or something? Uh, no, no, of course not. This is uh, this is rather interesting. I guess I've never quite heard about this before. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll just have to. I don't know. Will will he be able to come back? Like when do you expect him to be back at work functioning? Well, it's pretty. It's wedged in there pretty tight. I don't know if we'll be able to get him in uh, later on today. However, maybe late next week, as long as he doesn't use any other utensils around the house, <laughs> we may be able to get him into work. And you know, you know, Anne. Yes. Uh, Robert has also said that he's probably the last guy you'd suspect doing something like this. Oh, uh, yeah. I, and is he, pretty, is he a pretty macho guy? Yes. I never, ever would have thought this. He's the, and definitely. the reason I'm calling you, Robert actually did ask us to call you. It's Lamont and Tanelia, 92.3 KSJO. Oh. <laughs> it's Dirty Friday. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> and you're on the air. Oh. <laughs> uh, that... Oh, that SOB. He's going to get it when he gets back. Hey, and and he's, he's waiting to come into work just to make this call. He's probably oh. sitting in the parking lot right now. Oh, my. All he I better tell- be lucky if he's got a job when he comes oh, back. Oh, and, and all I'm going to tell you is if you have a curling iron in your purse, hide it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm giving it to him. I'm going to make him put it in. Uh, 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 yeah, just, just he's going to show it to me. Yeah. I don't oh, care. No. They don't call him the short curly ones for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on. We got to make sure it's the curling iron and nothing else. <laughs> That's right. Hold on the line. We got a little something for you. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. At seven thirty-one, Lamont and Tanelli, five seven five KSJL.